Hey, Kim Stars, this is Mrs. Vandaloy bringing you another edition of Kim Star Video. We are in section 7.3, video number four. So, uh, do you remember how I started the last video, 7.3, uh, number three, where we talked about making a sand sculpture? And we said, well, how do I know how many pieces of sand are in your sand sculpture? And last section, we we're like, well, count them, all right? And that'd be kind of crazy. But that's where we introduced how many particles are in a mole. That's how many physical counting particles there are in one mole. What was another way that we could have determined how many sand particles were in that sand sculpture? It says, all right, take the mass of it. We said that if we could like count out 100 grams of mass or of, a, of, a, of sand and mass the 100 grams, then mass the whole thing and we could factor label and determine the, uh, how many particles are in the entire thing. All right, that's kind of where this is going. So we need to find the mass of one mole. We always know there's 6.2 times 10 to the 23rd particles in one mole, no matter what, but how much does that weigh? Because that is something that we can actually do in lab. We're not gonna sit out and count them all, but we can weigh them and then we can know how many particles there are, okay? So um, you will need your periodic table Make sure you have the one with polyatomic ions, all right? You're gonna need both the periodic table and the polyatomic ion sheet and your calculators. You're gonna need your calculator for every section, so I might as well just keep it out, okay? So go ahead, pause this, go grab your stuff and come on back, okay? All right, welcome back. Hopefully you got your stuff. Um, so we're gonna find the molar mass of a substance. What is the uh, molar mass? It's the mass of one mole. So what does this say right here? This is important, all right? The atomic mass of an element. Stop right there. Back in chapter three, we learned about things in the periodic table. We learned about the atomic number, which is the number of protons. And then we saw that other number, that, that, that decimal number. We called that the atomic mass. And we, we calculated that by taking the uh, weighted average of the different isotopes. You remember doing that? That was the atomic mass. That was the average mass of one atom. Now, I don't know about you, but we, we have a scale that comes kind of nearest uh, 10 thousandths of a gram. That's not gonna help us, all right? This thing is so, the mass is so itty bitty small, an atomic mass unit, it doesn't really help us, all right? So look what we can do now with that. The atomic mass of an element expressed in grams. That's something you can weigh out is the mass of the mole of the element. This is the molar mass, all right? So find carbon, will you? All right, so on your periodic table, what is that decimal number? What is the average atomic mass of one atom of carbon? Is it 12.01 AMUs, atomic mass unit? Yes, it is. Well, by golly, how much is one mole of carbon? It is 12.01 grams. So what does this say? If I took 12 point, or if I took a 6.2 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of carbon and weighed them out, it's gonna weigh 12.01 grams. How come they're the same number? Well, their units are different, all right? Their units are different. Um, and so that can account for um, being, the, if I multiply this by you know so many particles, I can get to the same number. I don't know if that makes sense to you, but just deal with it, all right? It works, trust me, it works. Okay, what about silicon? Find silicon right underneath carbon on your periodic table. What is the mass of one atom? Hopefully you got 28.09 AMUs and therefore it's 28.09 grams. If your periodic table is off a tad from mine, um, don't worry about it. Um, I didn't have a copy of your periodic table in front of me, so I was using one on my phone. All right, so hopefully it's the same number. All right, oh, what about copper? Go ahead and find copper. You know it's in the transition metal, right? So go ahead and find that. What's the mass of one atom of copper? And then that's the molar mass of one mole. So I can weigh out 63.55 grams of uh, carbon and I will be pretty much convinced that's about 6.2 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of carbon. What about 10? 
118.69 AMUs, that's the mass of one atom of tin. Well, how much does 6.02 times 10 to the atoms of tin weigh? 118.69 grams. My scale can measure these, okay? Now notice what this chart has in common. These are all what? Elements. So if I am interested in 118 of these things, I just read it off the, the chart and voila, there's the molar mass. But is everything um, an element? The answer is no. All right, so what about of a compound? All right, that's what most things are, are compounds. We have millions of compounds and only 118 atoms. So how do we find the molar mass of compounds? To find the molar mass, find the number of grams of each element in one mole of the compound, then do what? Then what? Oh, underline this, and you know, circle this, highlight this, and then add the masses of the elements in the compound. So let's check this out, okay? All right, well, determine one mass, uh, the mass of one mole of carbon monoxide. I gave you the, the name. Well, what do you have to know? You have to know the formula, because I have to know how many atoms of each element there are in one mole. Okay, so how do I do that? Well, first of all, make note, carbon monoxide is a covalent compound. Covalent is non-metal, non-metal. The prefixes tell you what you have. I have one carbon, and what does mono mean again? One, and one oxygen. So how do I find the formula? The, I'm sorry, the, how do I find the molar mass? What does it say to do? It says to find the grams of each element in one mole. All right, so over here, I have one mole of carbon, and each carbon weighs 12.01 grams. I have one mole of oxygen, and each oxygen weighs 16 grams. So here, let me show you this. So here I have, uh, let me use red, one mole of carbon and one mole of oxygen. All right, and what does that weigh? You have a calculator, don't you? There you go, 28.01 grams. Um, again, please just don't watch me do this, but when I pause, you, you should be actually doing this yourself. You should be thinking about what I'm saying and trying it, okay? All right, what well, carbon dioxide? Well, once again, I have a non-metal, non-metal. So the prefixes, that's covalent, the prefixes tell you what you have. So obviously, you probably knew that is CO2. So how many carbons do you have? One. How many oxygens do you have this time? Two. So you notice how I set this up. All right, we still have one mole of carbon and two moles of oxygen. That's where that two right here came from. So one times 12.01 plus two times 16. Hey, what do you get? Hopefully you got 44.01 grams. Holy moly, look at this next one. It's sucrose. Look at that formula. Is that not nuts or what? All right, let's see what we get. So how many carbons do you have? 12. How many hydrogens do you have? 22. How many oxygens do you have? You guessed it, 11. So put it all together. So this is my setup. I have, again, 12 uh, moles of, or 12 um, oxygens, okay? And so it's 12 times 12.01. I have 22 hydrogens. If you look up a hydrogen, it's 1.01. That's on your periodic table, right? And then I have 11 oxygens, and each oxygen is 16. You see where I'm getting this from? Again, I'm taking how many carbons I have, multiplying it by the mass of each carbon. I have the um, 22 hydrogens, and I multiply that by the mass of one hydrogen. I have 11 oxygens, and I multiply that by the mass of one oxygen, 16. And then I do what? I add these masses together, and what do I get? Well, you figure it out. What do you get? I got 342.34 grams. All right, let's do the next couple. All right, number four, sodium hydroxide. Sodium is a metal, so this is ionic. Now, is this always, always, or wishy-washy? It's always, always. Is it a, a binary or polyatomic? Hydroxide, it ends in ide, 
but it's hydroxide. Is hydroxide on the periodic table? The answer is um, no, it's not. All right, so it is not on the periodic table. So look on your sheet, that polyatomic ion sheet. Find hydroxide, okay? Find it? Good. What's the charge of sodium always? Plus one, right? What's the charge of hydroxides on your sheet? Negative one. Hey, what do you notice about their charges? They do what? They cancel. So our formula is just NaOH. So how many sodiums are in my formula? One. How many oxygens are in my formula? One. How many hydrogens are in my formula? One. All right. So you just need to add up all of these. Now, once again, all right, I have one sodium, and each sodium is 22.99. I have one oxygen, and each oxygen is 16. Do you see where I'm getting these from? These, the grams are from the periodic table. The coefficients, these numbers, are the subscripts. So one hydrogen's at 1.01, and I got 40.0. About the next one, copper two hydroxide. It's ionic. How do I know that? It's copper. Copper is a metal. Hey, what's the charge of copper? I gave it to you. It is everyone plus two. Did you all say that out loud? Hydroxide. Hey, it's the same hydroxide from the one above. It's negative one. Do the charges cancel out? Your answer is no. So what do you have to do, everyone? Yup, you got it, Chris. Cross. And how many hydroxides do you need? Two. Because you have two polyatomic ions, you must have a parenthesis. And that is so important. Okay? That is so important. Okay? Watch. How many coppers do you have? Just one. It's outside of the parenthesis. So you only have one. But how many oxygen do you have? This is, you have to distribute. I have two oxygens and I have two hydrogens. So you have to distribute, just like in math class. So if you have math class like three times, you know, x plus two, right? How do you figure out, you know, the, the, the terms here? Don't you have to distribute, right? Isn't that equal to three x plus six, right? Isn't that how that works? It's the same idea. You have um, the, the parentheses. And so you distribute that two throughout everything that's within the parentheses. I'll say it again. Because you have parentheses, why do you have parentheses? Because when you crisscrossed, you needed more than one polyatomic ion, didn't you? So you put those in parentheses. And so what does that do here? You have to um, um, distribute that two. So there's two oxygens and two hydrogens, all right? So I have uh, one copper, right? I have one copper. Yep, it's outside the parentheses. I have two oxygens and I have two hydrogens. So do you see where these numbers came from? The grams come from the periodic table. I'll say it again. Grams comes from the periodic table. So this comes from the periodic table and that came from the periodic table. The numbers out in front came from the formula. So when you add this all up, what do you get? Go ahead and do that for me, please. Get this. Okay. And there you go. All right. Let's look at aluminum sulfate. All right. So aluminum is a what? It's a metal. Therefore, this whole thing is ionic. So in order to come up with the formula, what must you know? You have to know their charges. So is aluminum always, always, or wishy-washy? Aluminum is always. What is its charge? Always. Look at it on your periodic table. What do you get? It is a plus three. Now, this next one is sulfate. It ends in eight. It must be a polyatomic ion if it ends in eight or eight. So find sulfate on your periodic table, and what is its charge? Say it louder, can't hear you. It's negative two, that's right. So do the charges cancel out? The answer is no. So how many aluminums do you get? Well, we're gonna crisscross it, right? I get two aluminums and ready, three sulfates. 
three is more than one. So what must you do to the sulfate? You need to put it in parentheses. All right, so here it is. I have two aluminums and three sulfates, so I had to put sulfate in parentheses. So now what? I have two aluminums, right? How many sulfurs do I have? Distribute. I have three sulfurs, don't I? Careful, careful. How many oxygens do you have? What are you going to do? Just like that example I showed you three times the quantity X plus two, what did I do? I multiplied. I didn't get three X plus five. I got three X plus six. You multiply these. So how many oxygens do I have? I have 12. Okay, so I have two aluminums, three sulfurs, and 12 oxygens. Okay, so this is the form, this is the molar mass of aluminum, sulfur, and oxygen. Go ahead and calculate and see what you got. Oh no! I made a mistake. I just noticed that. That's this number, isn't it? Silly Mrs. Vandoy. What was our number from above? There we go. Sorry about that. What is the formula for uh, molar mass of copper two hydroxide? It's at 97. What's the molar mass of the aluminum? 342. Sorry about that. I fixed it. Okay, so please fix that on your copy as well. Okay. All right, that's it. We'll practice this in class next time. So, hey, don't wait to be great. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.